The reporting mechanism is one aspect of a new Department of Justice awareness campaign to highlight that sharing or threatening to share intimate images of another person without their consent is a form of abuse and now a crime. Joining me to discuss the importance of this hotline is Megan Sims. Megan has campaigned against image-based abuse after her own pictures were shared online without her consent in 2016. Megan, thank you very much for speaking to us on News Talk Breakfast. Firstly, will you just, uh, I suppose, remind listeners uh, of your own experience around this? Yeah, no problem. So in 2016, um, I was a victim of image-based sexual abuse. I had my photos and videos shared probably hundreds of thousands of times at this point. Um, And going on from that, then I tried to take my life because of it. I honestly didn't see a future for myself and it was really, really bad. Um, That's basically it. And then I took two years out from social media and then I came back and I realised that there were still no laws because I couldn't report it when it happened to me. Um, when it happened to you, Megan, it wasn't. We have Coco's law now, but it wasn't a crime at the time. Is that correct? No, it wasn't a crime. And I came across a forum a few weeks later of me and a ton of other girls, a lot I knew that I brought into the guards myself, and we were told that there was nothing that could be done because, unfortunately, it wasn't a crime. Okay. So it took a few years until I kind of rebuilt myself, and then as soon as I came back, then I started the petition, which kind of blew up overnight. Yeah. Um, and then I had maybe 10 people a day reaching out to me for help for about a year. I, I, um, I was fighting really hard for the law. And then obviously then the leak happened in November where we came across those hundreds of thousands, if not nearly millions of images of young Irish women and girls, um, which obviously pushed the law through very fast. This is, is this is the idea that there's a collector culture out there, isn't it? That, that there are certain people who collect many thousands sometimes of images of women often without yeah. their consent. Can I just ask you, Megan, and it is a personal question, when when you know that intimate images of yourself are being shared by, by strangers, what does that do to you? How does it make you feel? I mean, I know you refer to, to, to your mental health issue, but, but it might be hard for people to understand what it, it does to a person. Can you explain it a little bit? So for me, I basically felt like my life was completely over, which is the thing. I thought I'm never going to be able to get a job because unfortunately it will get reported to my job. I thought I was damaged goods, I would say, that nobody would ever want me again. So I was never going to be able to have a relationship. Um, And then obviously that with the countless bullying messages I was getting, I logged into Facebook and I think I had like 400 plus messages calling me every name under the sun. Sure. Um, so it's a really, really difficult thing to deal with that and with everybody seeing you in obviously a very intimate yeah. way. Um, it's it's an extremely shameful thing. I've kind of owned it now and I couldn't really care. But at the time I was young and I didn't really understand that it was something that had been done to me rather than what, my what own age? Thoughts. It's five years ago. What age were you then? 19. Oh, God. OK. Just 19. Yeah. No, I can only imagine, I, I, I genuinely, uh, I can only imagine how distressing it must have been. Uh, this hotline, what would something like this have meant for you in terms of somewhere somewhere to go, I suppose, that, that, that could help you? But also the fact that the hotline exists, I suppose, gives validation to, to people who this is happening to, that they are being uh, abused. Well, the thing is, there's, there's, there is just nothing there. And I've been saying this from the beginning. This is kind of, this was always kind of part of the plan. We needed the law, then we needed a service. And next we need education because that's the only way anything is going to change. But I think it it would have meant the world to me as somebody going through it to even be able to do anything because you feel so hopeless. And if people aren't educated on the internet and don't know how to get their images taken down. It can be really, really distressing. Can I ask you just lastly, Megan, it's five years on now and and I'm sure you're still only very young and I'm sure it was a hugely traumatic time, although look what you've achieved from it. Things have changed now, which is which is a very good thing. Um, How are you doing now? Amazing, to be honest, I took complete ownership. We got the law passed, you know, it was a campaign, I think. You know, I hate to say things happen for a reason, but I think I made it a reason. I think it can be a reason if you make it one. So hopefully with this as well, we're seeing real change that's spread all over the world. They have changed the laws in America, England because of the Irish law. So it's amazing, really. Look, thank you very much for speaking to us this morning on News Talk Breakfast. That is Megan Sims there who has campaigned against image based abuse. And if you've been affected by this interview, uh, anyone can call Pieta House on 1800 
247 247 or text HELP to 51444 or anyone who has had an intimate image shared without their consent online can now contact that hotline and the address of that is hotline.ie.